When we talk about the Earth's atmosphere, what do we mean? Imagine a layer cake wrapping around the Earth. That is essentially what the Earth's atmosphere is like, layers upon layers of gas surrounding the Earth, working to protect the planet. We asked Ray Weyama, an atmospheric scientist at NASA Ames Research Center, to explain a little bit more about the function and importance of our atmosphere. Ueyama is part of the Atmospheric Science Branch, which focuses on advancing our knowledge and understanding of atmospheric behaviors around the planet. Ueyama's research focuses specifically on processes in the upper troposphere and stratosphere, which also enables her to support NASA's airborne missions with forecasting and flight planning support, data collection, and analyses. The Earth's atmosphere allows life to exist, like a protective bubble that surrounds the planet, stated Wayama. Although we cannot directly see the atmosphere, it provides the air we breathe and protects us from harmful ultraviolet UV rays. The atmosphere also works to trap heat and maintain moderate habitable temperature ranges. Without it, the Earth's temperature would be similar to that of the moon which experiences extreme temperature fluctuations between day and night, minus 208 degrees Fahrenheit to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, due to the lack of an atmosphere. There are five main layers that make up the atmosphere, differentiated by factors such as temperature, chemical composition, and air density. 1. Troposphere the troposphere is the lowermost atmospheric layer. The troposphere holds all the air plants need for photosynthesis and animals need to breathe. Earth's weather occurs in this layer, as it is where much of the atmospheric mass, including most of the water vapor, is found. The troposphere is also the densest atmospheric layer due to compression from the upper layers. The troposphere interacts with the Earth's surface, creating gradients in temperature that drive motion in air and water. The water from the Earth's surface converts to water vapor via evaporation and transpiration and moves throughout the troposphere, where it condenses into clouds. Winds move the clouds, and the water comes back down as precipitation, rain, snow, sleet, and hail. Within the troposphere, the temperature decreases with increasing altitude as a result of the air becoming thinner higher up in the layer. This temperature decrease is why we see snow at the peaks of tall mountains. 2. Stratosphere The stratosphere is the layer above the troposphere. Compared to the troposphere, the lower stratosphere experiences less turbulent air due to reduced convection, the vertical movement of the air in the atmosphere. This region is where commercial passenger aircraft fly. Unlike the troposphere, the temperatures begin to increase as the altitude increases within this layer, largely due to the presence of the ozone layer, which absorbs and protects the Earth from the sun's UV radiation. According to Wayama, this temperature variance creates stability, with cooler, denser air at the bottom and warm, less dense air at the top. 3. Mesosphere the mesosphere is the middle layer between the stratosphere and the thermosphere. Meteors burn up when they enter the mesosphere, due to their speed of travel and the increased presence of gas molecules in the mesosphere compared to the outer atmospheric layers. This creates friction and heat, which incinerate the incoming meteors. Like the troposphere, temperatures begin to decrease with increasing altitude. The mesosphere is the coldest atmospheric layer and Yuyama noted that the mesopause, the boundary between the mesosphere and the thermosphere, is the coldest part of the entire atmosphere. This is because the mesosphere receives less solar radiation, sunlight, than the layers above it, and the air is less dense than the layers below. 4. Thermosphere the thermosphere resides above the mesosphere. This layer is very active, swelling and shrinking in response to varying levels of solar radiation from the sun. The thermosphere can reach temperatures up to 2,000 degrees Celsius or higher. According to Weyama, the density of the layer, or rather the lack thereof, is responsible for its soaring temperatures. With so few gas particles, each one absorbs more radiative energy, which causes the thermosphere to reach such high temperatures. 
This layer is notable for being home to the International Space Station and other low-Earth orbit satellites. Within parts of the mesosphere and thermosphere are stretches of high-energy electrons and ionized atoms, referred to as the ionosphere. Don't let the sphere part of the name fool you. These are groups of particles within the meso- and thermospheres. The sun's very high-energy X-rays and UV radiation hits the gas molecules, and it knocks off electrons from their parent atoms, leaving a lot of ions. So that's why we call it the ionosphere, explained Weyama. When these particles are excited, they collide to create auroras, also known as the northern and southern lights. 5. Exosphere The exosphere is the outermost layer of the Earth's atmosphere, where most satellites orbit. The exosphere denotes the end of our atmosphere and the beginning of outer space, though there is not a definitive top altitude where the exosphere ends. It's kind of like the air molecules are leaking out of the Earth's atmosphere, said Weyama. That's it. We've learned about the atmosphere layers in a simple way. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the bell so you never miss a new video. See you in the next one. Bye.